I'm going to attempt this like I did last year. And uh, I recorded on my laptop and it didn't save it. So maybe I'm smarter this year, I don't know. The reason why I'm not using my phone is because the phone is showing the road ahead of me as I drive. Where I'm at in my life right now is without a job. Yeah, I'm between jobs. I might be starting on the 21st somewhere. The one called me today, it's 45 minutes away. So that's uh, my second choice. My first choice is in town. Good chance I'll get it. Now this is my fourth annual men's retreat. So I've been thinking about what I want to do and also what I don't want to do on this men's retreat. How much do I want to read? How much do I want to write? How much do I just want to think? How much do I want to socialize? I'm trying to balance all that. Here we are. This is the part I want to record with the windows down so you can hear the water. Yes, I'm taking this 2012 Dodge Charger down a riverbed of water. I remember the first time I drove through this bed was with my Cadillac. The first time I came was in somebody else's car, so they drove through the bed. Yeah, I was in the Cadillac with Sherman. We got a video and everything, but I don't think I ever uploaded it. And of course, that LG phone died like the other three. That's why I went Apple. I walked this last time. It's a nice long walk. Didn't quite make it to the end because I was running out of time, had to get back for dinner. Anybody here so I I don't see any cars it's just me they were doing some convoy at 8 o'clock and I thought I just don't want to get up that early I want to sleep in get coffee with Jenny I end up getting my hair cut you'll never see my hair going that way again the barberette um, did it that way and I'm just let it go that way so now I'm gonna get my bunk I've got first choice evidently so that's good nature is here black squirrel there are also tarantulas there's another squirrel over there um, didn't see any last year the year before I did, I got it on recording, but of course that's still on the phone that died on me, so. Question is, where do I want to go? Which one? Depends on who's going to be in what. Do you pick the closest one? I can't believe I'm the first one here. I don't see anybody. Here it is. This is it. Beautiful. Listen to that silence. It 
It's so quiet, you could hear a, a squirrel fart. That's how quiet it is. <laughs> I just made that up. I'm relaxing in the cabin, typing up some notes on Genesis 1, my commentary called the cosmological creation or application. I don't like the word application in the title, so it's called cosmological creation. And I'm up to verse 10. And this is on, oh, there it is, 13 pages. There it is. Yeah, this, is, this ain't for mm. <laughs> No. But I, I believe you got it in you. It's worth it once you get in. Yeah. yeah. The body goes numb. You're my competition here for best shots. He's the competition too. Oh, that would have been great. Last time I went, everybody got mad at me. I was in a canoe. <laughs> Just crossed the river over to Signal. Now I was real willing to drive down the road if I had to, but I started getting messages popping up all over the place. Uh, like 16 messages or something like that. Nobody ever messages me. And I've gone two days and I got 16 messages. However, one of those messages was the, uh, the new boss. He told me to call him and so I'm gonna go Monday morning. So it looks like it all worked out. So here's the story. When, when this was going down, well, after the email came out, we're all looking for jobs. That very night, I applied at uh, PWT. Most of the guys pl applied at PWT, but I I'm pretty sure I was one of the first ones. And I never heard back. I tried to call their number. I emailed the recruiter. Nothing. But other people already started there and everything. I'm like well feels like that door was just shut on purpose everything was a compromise everything was further away this is the one job that was closer I get Monday through Friday work days sometimes I might work a Saturday a half a day on a Saturday looks like I lost my parking spot And plus I don't want to be in the oil field. 
I just, uh, so no compromises. Can you imagine that? That is amazing. Other than, you know, it's a little bit less money. But uh, I'll have time, especially Saturday, to work on my side hustles. So anyway, that's the story. Good shot. to go hiking they can't wait it got cool so I'm wearing this I'll probably warm up on the hike but I got it anyway There's a jumping ledge right over there. See right there? Oh, that's where you guys jump? Yeah. Oh, so this is the blue hole. Uh-huh. And you... That's the edge right there. That goes all the way down. Yeah, there's no uh, no guard railing here. Where we could get together 
as men and talk about the situation of the church. About five of us. And the idea was to get away someplace cheap and talk about uh, some of the struggles that we're going through as a church. We were in uh, desperate financial straits. And um, we were at the point where it was very much a conversation about, um, you know, if the church were to close, you know, what would happen? And how would we go about doing that? It was a really difficult time watching your pastor with terminal cancer you know, get sick and know that he had so many debts and so many obligations that just went unmet. So we got together and kind of laid out where our church was. And over the past seven or eight years, we've uh, been doing this every year um, to give you a status of the church and uh, to let you know where we're going so you can get more excited, can you get excited about the church and uh, know where uh, you can contribute, where you can help. And uh, it's something also you can share with your family. And so the Lord has blessed for the past uh, six or seven years or however long it's been. And uh, now we have all of you here in several churches represented, and um, I get to share good news about Calvary this time, and uh, that, that makes me excited. It's Wednesday, almost time for dinner, and I'm a little restless, and also lazy. I got one or two naps today, a nap yesterday. I got some reading to do. The first two days went very quickly, and it's it slowed down. I guess that's a good thing. This is this is about the time to sit alone and reflect. Is that ham? It is. Yeah, I just got bored, really. Oh, okay. And so I'm really just going to church up some ham. Sweet. Let's go with dinner. We got a bunch of extra and didn't want it to go to waste. Sweet. All right. Page 126. And uh, as you're reading through your particular section, did you underline or uh, mark up anything that really stuck out at you? If you did, let us know what it is, Mark. Uh, my favorite in here says, uh, living in the 21st century is like being in a jar of muddy river water. And only when the jar remains still will the sediment drop to the bottom and the water once again become clear. And I highlighted that in that chapter because that kind of reminds me. What page is that? That's 128, near the bottom. Yeah, living in the 21st century is like being in a jar of muddy river water. Only when the jar remains still will the sediment drop to the bottom and the water once again become clear. Sabbath keeping helps me see God and life. Yeah. That's good. But things, it, like we keep it all stirred up and it's hard for us to differentiate, right? Mm -hmm. And we sometimes just need that Sabbath. We need that Sabbath. We were created, like Ryan said, to take that day off. Who else? Uh, what other paragraphs uh, stuck out to you as you
skipped coffee yesterday, but I'm not going to skip it today. I've got stuff to do, things to accomplish. I've got to be on my A game. Today, right now, you're building out that profile. And, um, you know, in your mind or on paper, I would jot down what are some attributes of you when you're 65 years old. I'm retired, maybe. My house is paid for. Um, my kids are out of college and married and all doing okay. And if, <clears throat> men, if you're not going to grow up to be the crotchety old man and it's a wonderful life, you have to begin thinking about it right now. It's not, <clears throat> it's not that you suddenly arrive at being the, at the end of your life or you know, when things are starting to wind down, being that kind of guy. And you're going to have grandkids. You're going to have great-grandkids. You're going to have kids. You're going to be a, a person that is an elder with great respect for pe from people, your cousins, nephews, all the rest of them. They're going to look up to you. And one day you're going to be in that position where, you know, my granddad was, where someone is going to think the world of you. They're going to think that you are the best thing since life's bread. They're going to think that there is nobody better than you. And when you're in that kind of influential position with your with family and people that you know, um, will you be able to share that wisdom? Will you be able to point your grandkids back to God and back to the Bible and say, look, um, I went through really hard times, one, two, and three, and I got through it, and you're going to get through it. Or to be able to say, <clears throat> I, I have seen the path, that, I have seen people on the path that you're on, and I want to warn you, you need to stop on that path. You don't, don't go down that road any longer. You need to get this, this, this out of your life so that you can live a life that honors the Lord, that has a strong family, and that ends up running your way race well. So as we begin winding down uh, the retreat, um, it's time to start getting that perspective. One day, what do you want people to say at your funeral? Not a very pleasant thought, is it? What do you want people to say at your funeral? And Norm Smith was a good example. People said that same thing over and over and over again. Um, he was a servant. He was low-key. He was easy to talk to. He had wisdom. Um, he was funny. He was good to be around. And um, your legacy will outlast your life. Uh, people 100 years from now, 150 years from now, will know your name. Uh, they'll be able to look through your Facebook posts. be able to read through your emails. Um, they'll know who you are, and they'll know a lot about you. They'll know more about you than you know about your grandparents. They're gonna look at all, they're gonna see all your pictures, right? They're gonna see your social media profile. They're gonna see all the things you went through in life. There'll be way more stories about you that will be told that then that were told about your grandparents. So right now, it's time to say, this is the kind of old man I'm gonna end up being. And I'm gonna lay a track. I'm gonna leave, leave a path of a, of a legacy that points people in the right direction. That's a good fishing hole, I'll bet you. Oh, look at this. They're making a rope course. Ah. Oh. Look at 
fast. And they're not making one. They are oh, on. Got got one. It. Oh, it's a zip line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. This is the blue hole. You can see I'm up, way up high and you can see all the way down there. You see a fish down there? I saw a fish. That's how beautiful this place is. Because uh, as I put my phone underneath the water, I come and look at it. It's pretty neat. Wouldn't you like to be here right now? This is called the Blue Hole. It's more like an aqua green, maybe? I don't know. But it's a greenish blue. At some point, you can come here by yourself. I'm taking the last lone walk. The road, the, the rogue road. I'm going to check out this Upper East Canyon Trail. See what's out here as I think and contemplate and pray. So I went that way, went all the way around on a cliff. I'll show you the picture. I just took a picture. I didn't do a video because I was pretty lost in the moment and just came back, took this Y and a lot of thinking. I, I think I had a little break, break breakthrough. I'm also thirsty and can't talk. <laughs> so there's that. Yep, I think I've got clarity. It only took me four days, but I think I have clarity on the focus of my future.